back, ladies and gentlemen, here to the continued coverage for the UMG Prime $2,000.44 Search and Destroy. Of course, hopping in toward our first semi-final matchup of the night, taking place between Borders Down and C2C. Of course, our best of three series starting off here on Arden Forest. Of course, if you were or were in the match prior to this one, we're kind of watching the action alongside myself. We got to witness the guys in C2C dominate their way on this exact same map versus the side of West Coast. One Arden Forest, six rounds to two, did a great job as far as their offensive execution. Of constantly pushing the A-bomb site, which is exactly what we're seeing at the start of this one as Blue lighting up the kill feed. Shady, last player alive. Thankfully finds one for his troubles, but can't do much more than that. Overall, solid aggression coming on this A bomb site. When we look at Arden Forest between both A and B. I would say normally, I think over time, this is what happens for certain search and destroy maps, is that kind of off bomb sites almost become the preferred a lot of the different time, just because you know off strategies obviously get formed, different things can kind of be solidified as far as strats are considered. But that can happen from time to time, where you know the kind of the preferred bomb site ends up becoming the least favorite of the two, just because of how strats work and how kind of defensive teams, defensive setups for different teams can kind of be earned a lot longer of the time. But as Shady makes his way through Fire Alley, he will quickly hit the floor as the kill is going back and forth, half the lobby dropping in a matter of moments. As now Eddie Mystical sitting just inside of you alongside of his teammate Lispzeus just behind him. They're looking to try to retake on this site, but Lispzeus has no issue whatsoever going for the challenge. This is the guy who played incredibly solid in the last series and really was the big difference maker into progressing C2C to the current semifinal. Haven't been able to watch the guys from Borders down, but I know they've been playing against some pretty stiff competition. I want to say I actually took down uh, Goatism and Believes team in one of the uh, prior rounds to this, which is by no means a uh, easy team to beat by any means. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually kind of new to the, the group here on Borders Down. I think I've seen this team name before, but just never had the opportunity to cast over these guys. But uh, Remarks, Tragedies, I wanna say that's Dave Paid and uh, Shady. My personal first time being able to watch these guys play, and we'll see how Tragedies can try to find himself in the 1v2 spot. Seeking out any mystical just inside a fire. So with a man advantage right now, Lipsus does make the 1v1 challenge, which normally would be pretty risky. But this guy's feeling on top of the world tonight. I'm not sure what it is about his PPS 8 shot, but it has been just on fire. As uh, in that round, he does find the hat trick, aka three kills, along with a defuse. So got to be feeling it pretty solid. And as uh, now moving forward into round number three. We'll see how the guys from Borders Down can start to try and respond because now they're on defense. They know what exactly happened in the prior round where it was just kind of a dominance push toward A. It seems that it's the exact same strat. Smoke tossed out to kind of block out the vision for the players inside of back stacks. Hitman and Segatar combining for two off the start as they are just paving their way through Forest, having no issues whatsoever. As of course, the viewers alongside myself have got to witness their dominance on this A bomb site in their prior series. As I believe the bomb just does get pointed, so that score streak kind of earn rate does get added to it. And Hitman here seals the deal. As it, I mean, really, it's just been kind of like a whitewashing off the start. As in back to back offensive pushes. Like I said, C2C. Utterly destroying it. It looks like uh, we do see yet again another spawn out potentially. It looks like uh, Dave Pate. Joins the other team for a moment, and so it looks like we are going to close things out here. Back, ladies and gentlemen, I know in esports it's typical to say a quick commercial break, but this time it's actually valid. Of course, we just had to a uh, quick break to try to get all players back in the lobby. Things are good to go, and we should be playing from a 3-0 to zero score line in favor of C2C. Of course, before the commercial break, it was just overall dominance that was displayed, uh, to say the least, as it was just kind of a kind of overtime back-to-back -back offensive pushes from C2C were made toward this A-bomb site. And uh, now for Borders Down, right? They have the opportunity to kind of slow things down. They have the uh, spot as Lispsus just happens to take out one player with actually a stun, which you don't see happen very often. That's uh, not a one in a million player, but definitely one that is not happening often. But uh, as now Shady quickly in a 1v4 spot does thankfully take down, or take down Hitman. 
Talk about positives, how they can kind of rejuvenate themselves, trying to get back in this game. But just coming around that side fire alley, Segatar is ready with a car 98k shot to the brain. There's a beautiful shot coming in from Segatar along with, with the headshot sound. It's also the, the dinner bell with the 4-0 uh, victory currently. Or 4-0 lead. Almost a victory at this point. But uh, we'll see what the strategy is. Of course, it looks like from the offense, a smoke tossed through middle. So what that's going to do is going to linger out Shady. Thankfully, the smoke wasn't tossed in the best line of sight. So he does have the advantage of giving the call-out to her to his team. I think it's a little bit late because his teammates basically get ran through. Shady with the bar in hand isn't able to make much happen. And now Dave paid. Good luck, my, my, my friend. Good luck, my pal. I, I almost feel like I'm attached to the guys on Borders Down just because of how dominate the opposition is right now. But generally, I mean, C2C is just having their way in this series. I mean, they have the advantage of, of course, dominating on the A-bomb site, so Borders Down is constantly thinking of that. So they've got that to be worrying about in the back of their minds, along with the fact that a smoke gets tossed through middle, which is kind of like a, a stale moment where the defensive team is like, okay, where are they going? Like, they could either be pushing A or B when you toss the smoke in that exact position. I think Shady was able to kind of spot the kind of Ending corner, he was able to spot the players rush through you, but his teammates just didn't get the call out soon enough. And they end up dropping in the end for it. But two picks found off the break. Dave paid finding one onto Eddie Mystical. So at least one positive for them right now. But as the bomb gets planted, Lispus is coming from the flank, and he actually does take down Shady. So you see player number three actually immediately focused toward the flank. So they've got a pretty nice setup right now. And what they really need to focus on is just either point of view. Segatart is able to drop one. And you keep in mind, bottom, rep, bottom right of your screen right now, how close this man is to streaks. Well, it would be a uh, round of sacrifice. They've got a few to work with, so I don't think they're in a, they're in a bad spot by any means. I don't think they have uh, any issue with kind of trading out this round, but right now, look at Segatart's point of view. He has a fantastic line sight on to Dave Paid, as he had no idea where that sniper bullet came from. And right now, Tragedies, his name, his gamer tag, could be living up to the exact same title. Tries to round the corner. Segatar will narrowly end up dropping, but still earns the streaks. Fantastic shot coming in from that man there, Segatar. Great job with the line side, as that player instead of B Dom had no idea what hit him. As uh, currently five rounds to one, at least Borders Down can chalk up one on the board, but to no avail on offense. You've got streaks to work with, and right now you see the amount of attention being focused toward the A site. Literally no one is on B. Three players in A, one through mid, and now you're starting to see those blue arrows kind of focus in. And what Hitman is doing is he's just trying to act as a distraction. He's just firing those FG bullets, trying to count out the opposition. And so once the blue arrows... Or excuse me, not the blue arrows, but the borders down group. They should realize the streak comes forward. That's to clear out the via bomb site. I mean, they are fully aware that the players from the from uh, borders down could be using mountain. So kind of like the blind glide bomb gets put in, and when they all kind of rush inside of cabin, they should realize that hey, that streak isn't meant for us. They think that we're actually on the via bomb site when we're actually not, and they don't make the rotation fast enough. The smoke gets tossed out through B bomb through B dom, and I'm pretty sure that's borders down. He tosses it. But how does the retake get made? Dave Pate stares at the bomb, realizes that there's not a whole lot of time left, but the players from C2C, they're separated throughout the entire map. You see the lane focus. And so here comes the glide bomb. Player currently on it. Can he stay alive as the question no ends up falling? Last player up is Dave Pate. Finds one for his troubles, but can't do much more than that as a hot 6-1 to one victory here on Arden Forest. And C2C is much as they dominated when it kind of came down to the A bomb site. It's kind of the exact same way that the overall scoreline does show it. So, of course, I believe we're going to take a quick look here at the, uh, of course, scoreline as far as the round counts considered for this map. As we get to witness, I believe, uh, it's a little bit wrong there. No, no worries, no worries. We can obviously come back to uh, myself whenever or whatever may, may be needed. But uh, regardless, though, when it kind of came down to this beginning, right, for C2C, just overall dominance was being shown. I think it's fair to say. Of course, we do get the restart at the end of one of the rounds and whatnot, but the kind of initial rush toward the A-bomb site, I mean, when you're a team like Borders Down and you're just kind of being dominated on the A-bomb site time after time after time, 
that kind of messes with you on defense because now you're like, okay, well, at any moment they could be kind of anti surrounding us and being kind of forcing a bait toward the B-bomb. But what was awesome about C2C is they realized the advantage that they were holding throughout the entire game of Search and Destroy. They realized the kind of or, or the kind of early dominance that they had, and they worked that through a strategy. It wasn't like, hey, let's kind of continue the exact same thing as time goes on until they can kind of counter us. A lot of teams like to do that. So what they did is they kind of played, it was like chess versus checkers, essentially, is what was kind of going down in that game. Constantly a step ahead of the opponent and really was just kind of time after time after time dominating them when it kind of came down to that seventh round where they kind of called checkmate and just kind of walked through the side of borders down. And like I said, just the overall kind of smart play, the ability to kind of utilize those streaks in a smart position. I can't remember who it was exactly, but in that seventh round where we witnessed one player sitting inside a bunker, all he's doing is just baiting out shots. I mean, every bullet is making the guys from borders down think that, hey, a push is happening toward cabin. And you kind of see how not like worried they really were, but just how aware they were of what was kind of taking place throughout a lot of this game. The factor of how important a bomb site was, they send three on A, one through middle, no one inside of B. Like the streak comes forward. And I think whoever might have called it in, I want to say that was actually Segatar who ended up finding that insane sniper kill uh, toward the end of that sixth round. I mean, once he finds those streaks and starts to call them in, I think he's like, oh wow, I didn't actually find anyone. They don't actually have anyone toward back B. Let's get the bomb down. And they obviously work with it. So just overall, smart play coming in from C2C with a dominant victory like that. You got to manage the carry in that momentum towards some London docks, of course, for map number two. And uh, when it kind of comes down to London docks, we expect very fast-paced rounds. If you know anything about C2C, at least in my opinion, A from r Force kind of performs exactly like A on London docks as well. Fast-paced. You need a smoke to kind of get toward it. There can definitely be a sniper or a, kind of like an FG-42 in the back lines from either position to kind of cut you down. So I think the strategies from C2C are definitely going to kind of carry over. And I'm hoping to see the guys from Borders Down start to respond a little bit better. Kind of finding a pick, finding a first blood, but it's really going to kind of come down to their offensive rounds where they really need to kind of have a little bit more of a presence because on defense they're struggling. They have to kind of have either someone turn up or just kind of have an overall team effort if they want to at least see a mat number three, which of course would be on USS Texas. But guys, back, ladies and gentlemen, to the continued coverage here for the UMG Prime $2,000 for you for Search and Destroy. Of course, loading in here toward mat number two of our current semifinal taking place between Borders Down and C2C. Of course, speaking in mind, this is a best of three, so one game away is C2C from, of course, advancing themselves to the finals after having a pretty dominant victory on Arden Forest, winning that one in a six to one fashion. But now loading in here for some London docks, while the maps do have some similarities, they also have their differences. I was kind of discussing the dominance that the guys from C2C really had on specific bomb sites when it came down to Arden Forest, and uh, really, Borders Down has to kind of focus on their offenses, really kind of get some support underneath it. But Daddy Mystical right now, 1v3 scenario, turns into a 1v2, has the ability of swapping to uh, multiple weapons. Is that variant in his left corner? I, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, to be honest. I think that's actually a different gun, but still, tries to go for the challenge and takes down Shady on the bomb. 1v1, and right now, Dave has got to be feeling very, very nervous right now and goes for the challenge. Eddie Mystical going to let him know a 1v3 just when you start to think that Borders Down have got the momentum back at their side here for map two. Eddie Mystical is there to wave his finger and clutch this out. What a round coming in from the boys on C2C. I mean, heck, it's not even C2C. It's Eddie Mystical's game at this point. And that is one where you start to think, like I said, borders down, they're feeling pretty good, and just Eddie Mystical is there to just take the energy out of the room. Smoke tossed toward the B-bomb site. That's a bait. And it looks like play number two being Dave back here, of course, losing that last big engagement. Going for the early shots inside of 10. And our mark's holding a nice line sight here through that top side as shots continuing to go through. No one dropping as of yet. That quickly could change, though, with Sekatar firing some bullets forward. Lisp Zeus, the aggression can be shown. Sekatar ends up following quickly. Eddie Mystical does as well. If you know anything about this man, Lisp Zeus, especially for tonight's tournament, he can quickly turn the tide on a game. Hitman coming from the flank, takes down remarks. His position is no, but you see him just going for the challenge. You're not going to see players go for that very often. The reason why he does is he's got the confidence. And who wouldn't after a big round victory that just came through for Eddie? As Hitman takes down tragedies, it's now a 2v1 advantage right now for the guys on C2C. 
Shady gets spotted out. A 1v3 clutch in round one and a 2v3 clutch in round number two. And his Hitman and Lispsuits are able to get it done here. And right now, like I said, if you are the guys from Borders Down, it's a matter of someone needs to kind of take control, get some strategies formed, get a pick, and really just kind of work off of it. But make sure that they take down every single player. They can't have constant 1v1 challenges, which is exactly how we've seen these picks go. As Segatar greets remarks with a headshot, says, welcome to round number two. I'll see you, or round number three. I'll see you in the next one. As Dave Paid and Co. are trying to pick up the pieces, tragedies living up to his title right now. He ends up following Shady, last alive. As this is just utter destruction taking place here on some London docks. I was kind of discussing and bringing up that offense is important for Borders Down. And they're, they just got it handed to them. I mean, they are just kind of getting the, uh, the business, to say the least here. As right now, like I said, C2C has the ability, and I, what I really like from them so far is that we've seen them not have any issues with tossing over utility smokes. Went down in their last offensive run on both bomb sites, which continually messes with the enemy. Nice first pick found for Remarks as he does get the trade forward. His teammate Tragedies does give his team the overall man count advantage. And I like the play from, from Dave here. Actually does go for the, the quick rush of the top boxes. Has the idea of where players are lingering. And kind of shuts them down to that top closet area. Because once Dave kind of gets on that top box, there's only two ways you can kind of get out of that closet area. And look at this little line side. I actually saw this in uh, one of exclusive Ace's videos on YouTube. Quick little plug. But uh, different line sets you can use on this map. You can actually shoot through both sides. When it kind of comes through middle cut, there's actually uh, two rooms that look exactly like that on either side. And uh, both are obviously... Able to uh, shoot through it. Very uh, wall bangable, if that's even a word. Probably not. Probably shouldn't say that again. Regardless, though, smoke gets tossed out. We'll see if Borders Down can get something here. As it looks like uh, Dave, quick to find yet again another first blood. And Sekatar and Co. in the back lines inside of water, having some struggles. Despite that, Hitman does take out one, and it looks like uh, Lispzu is going for the quick challenge. Takes out two. And now Shady watching his teammates drop. Yet to find a kill. Sees the bomb down on his former teammate. I say former. He's still his teammate, but in this round. The stun comes forward, and still, though, he might be a little bit shaky, but he can still find shots like that. The car 98K is that good. As Hitman, though, currently 6-2. Can he get the advantage? And I believe he does spun from behind. I believe that Shady's position is known, but based on where Hitman's looking, he didn't try to go for the challenge. He should... Have an idea. Doesn't use the greatest of trigger discipline, so here comes the challenge. Who can win it? Right now, if you're Hitman, you do not need to challenge this. Get behind cover. The nade comes in. Shady's alive. And Hitman, this is so risky from him, and that's exactly why there's no reason to challenge that. There is no reason to go for this challenge, Hitman. Oh, my goodness. Why do you do that? He's not on offense. He's on defense. I don't get it. I really don't. I don't understand. Like, I understand the aggression and wanting to find that kill. Literally, you make the guy one shot with a nade. But he's got a machine pistol. Like, he knows he has a machine pistol. And for all he knows, he can have, like, duels PO8s. Like, <laughs> which is even a scarier thought to think about. Probably more than sniper rifle in, in that situation. But still, man. And now you're going to get this guy closer to streaks. Like, I, don't, I just don't understand. On a force spree right now. Lipsus needs to pick him off, but isn't able to do it. Shady on a five spree, an 0-3 start, but my goodness, he's turned things around and now isn't far off of streaks, like I said. Wow. Unbelievable play coming in from Shady at the moment. As it was an incredibly strong start from C2C, but that is quickly turning. Is I don't believe any of the guys from C2C have any streaks to work with. So while sometimes you can have positives after having a lead prior, I don't believe they really have any. It's kind of an afterthought at this point. We're even. And we're looking now at round number seven to see what Borders Down can try to do. I hear a smoke get tossed up. It's probably toward A. 
I would imagine it would be anywhere else. Probably from player number four, Shady. And uh, yeah, I, I like that. I like what they're doing with Shady right now. Kind of putting him in the back lines. He's kind of watching the flank that could be coming through Cole Room. If a Remarks dies, he's going to be in a kind of prime position to do that. Does have the sniper out, so a pick would be great. And yeah, as they're playing off of these streaks, they realize how important they are, especially when it kind of comes down to London Docks. And uh, I like the idea, too, that they're tempting toward the A-bomb site. You can kind of see based on the arrows that they're kind of wanting to get toward A. Of course, Segatar is one of the only players in their way besides Lisp Zeus, who's currently inside of fire. But they're trying to get a little bit of their feet wet when it comes down to waterside, funny enough. Because those streaks are going to be utilized probably on that bomb site, preferably of the two. So if they can find a pick, they have some experience when it comes down to A. They can utilize those streaks and have an idea of what they want to do when it comes to their next offensive round. So a lot of strategy coming in. Really wanted to keep Shady alive. But it looks like a tragedy does shut down Segatar. So 3v3 up close and personal fight. Remarks does take down Lissus. And the reason why they, they're able to take him out so quickly is Lissus doesn't even leave that room. He doesn't leave fire. He doesn't move, a, he doesn't move an inch. So why wouldn't they check that point of view? Hitman, his position is known. He's going to get seeked out from behind, and Tragedies is there. Eddie Mystical, 1v3, Granite. He has done it before. Can he do it again? 23 seconds on that bomb. Not close to streaks whatsoever, and really at this point you'd be thinking, well, why doesn't he go to challenge? Well, he doesn't want to feed the other team some streaks, so... He's going to check a few corners, try to spot anyone he can, and right now... Their primary goal, just keep Shady alive. Keep Shady up. And they can be in an even better position. As I believe this one started off 3-0. to zero. And with Borders down, responding the way that they are, this is pretty surprising. And, and honestly, not just the fact that it's, you know, London Docks, but it's the fact that C2C played so well on Arden Force. They went six rounds to one. A switch has flipped, to say the least, but we'll see how the offensive team of C2C can do now when it comes down to be a full four-man rush onto this bomb site. Tragedies kind of being the scout right now, trying to give some information toward his group, toward his team. And based on those blue arrows on the minimap right now, they can make a push happen. Shady ends up finding a kill, so he's now earned the fighter pilot literally 10 points away from a glide bomb. An assistance would do it, and it looks like Hitman now 1v4, despite them making the full four-man rush toward B. They don't get the bomb planted. And really, toward the beginning of this round, I mean, Borders down. They had three players, I think, toward Waterside. They had, like, no one position toward B. They were totally caught off guard in this position. But Hitman still has some time to work with. Ends up finding, finding the second. His teammate has done it prior. Can he do it again? Takes down Shady! When we start the count out C2C, I start bringing up the next round. Hitman, much like his prior teammate Eddie Mystical, are clutching out 1v3 scenarios. What is happening on London Docks? Literally two of the four rounds from C2C are coming from 1v3 clutches. Segatar's one and seven. What is going down? We're level up four, heading into round number nine. C2C still with the series advantage at one to zero. Only needing two more rounds here on London Docks to close out this series and advance to the finals. And I want to say, if we can actually go with Shady really quick, I want to see, did he earn that streak? So no, didn't earn those 10 other points. Didn't think he did, so does only earn the fighter pilot. Despite that, though, had a fantastic run. I mean, I think he was on like a five-kill spree at one point, so massive props to him. But it is going to call in the fighter pilot here. So using it on the offense, of course, we're going to see it looks like three players not having that mountain class, so the position is known. Let's do Still currently residing inside of fire. Looks like a fight going down. Secretor wins a huge one, dropping down Shady. So 3v2 advantage right now for the boys on C2C. Tragedies and Remarks trying to pick up the pieces. Any Mystical in the back lines. I love this play from him. Trying to just bait out, waiting for his teammates to join alongside of him. Maybe be trying to bait towards streaks for his teammate. Remarks able to drop one. Lisp Zeus is there for the trade as Tragedies. 1v2 is not able to find it. Drops on the bomb. 
Back and forth we go, and just like that, map point along with series point is earned here for the guys on C2C, a.k.a. Coast to Coast. C2C now finding themselves on the offense. Hitman currently resigning inside a barrel building. The quick rush is going forward. The stuns are in. And look at this. Dave has found himself in a very sneaky spot. And he does actually get spotted out. I'm not just exactly sure how they knew he was there. Just the intuition of their search and destroy play has revealed him. Potentially dropping down tragedies, but he's able to win it just like that. Two kills go their way. Shady falls, and now it's left up to tragedies. And a 1v2 spot needs the hat trick to force the round 11. Bomb is getting planted from Lisp Zeus. Has no issue getting it down. You know, a big 1v1 engagement. Hitman turns the corner at the worst time possible. Needs the teammate support, but he will find it in the end. Grabs another head glitch and will win the gunfight. As that will be the sixth round in the books here from the boys on C2C as they win this one here in a 2-0 fashion. But what a London Docks that was, ladies and gentlemen. That was just an unreal game to watch. Granted, in the first map of Arden Forest, it wasn't incredibly close. Of course, it was like a 6-1 to one pretty dominant win from C2C. But when it came down to London Docks, it was a different answer from the guys on Borders down as we'll be able to witness here the uh, round count scoreboard to really kind of see how this game won. You want to talk about momentum. I mean, three rounds to four rounds to another three-round victory. I mean, it was all about momentum when it kind of came down to this game as we kind of can clarify what exactly happened in this match. I mean, I know from time to time, you know, kind of scoreboards like this don't tell the full story, but it really kind of does in this match, right? C2C comes from a hot 6-1 to victory on Iron Forest. Now loading in here for London Docks, they take three straight rounds. I'm thinking, okay, well, border's down. What can they do? What can they really provide? And that's when Shady started to turn up. We see that insane 1v1 engagement where I think it was Hitman shouldn't have challenged through midwater side he ends up getting taken down and through that i believe shady goes on to earn a streak uh goes on like a five spree or whatnot gonna only earns the uh, fighter pilot but uh, still though i mean just what an insane game we see a 1v3 i think come out in one of the first rounds from eddie mystical it's gonna bring the guys from c2c back into the game after losing a few rounds in a row we see hitman also clutch at a 1v3 so just Honestly, what a roller coaster of uh, a ride, to say the least, was that London Ducks. But granted, it is C2C who now have booked their ticket here for the finals in the uh, Prime, of course, $2,000 4 4 Search and Destroy here on February 2nd. And uh, now looking on here, I believe we should have a, a bracket graphic to kind of show you guys, if possible, uh, to kind of realize what's going on as far as how things are lining out. So it looks like at the bottom of the bracket, we actually have Supremo. Currently taking on a prime. A winner of that will face off against FaZe Clan. And uh, I believe Supremo has actually, just funny enough, reported that they did actually win that match. And that's funny enough to kind of bring up the fact that we did actually get to watch Supremo uh, play in their round four game as they were able to kind of take down uh, Twerk, Wheelay, Fearless, and Holly Diz. A very experienced Search and Destroy team. They also take down the guys on Prime as well. Uh, so they're obviously making their way through the tournament. Of course, facing off against a Titan like FaZe Clan is not going to be an easy feat, to say the least. However, though, they've had uh, their tests in the past, and we'll see how they do versus, obviously, the guys on FaZe. And the winner of that will obviously come to face off against the guys here on C2C. So with that in mind, of course, you guys got a little bit of an idea as to how the bracket is currently lining out. And, uh, yeah, like I said, I mean, I'm just trying to... Take a break here from what was that uh, that last game. I believe uh, kind of looking at the scoreboard really quickly. Uh, Hitman actually finishes off 12 and six along with the 1300 score. Just unbelievable play in this last match. But uh, like I said, moving forward here, C2C, like I said, have found themselves in the finals and are now currently awaiting for their opponent. I don't believe that anyone is currently streaming uh, along the lines of, uh, I think it's FaZe and Supremo. So that match is obviously going to be coming up. So of course, once that match does conclude, we'll obviously be able to uh, kind of relay to you guys what's kind of going on with that match and whether or not the finals, of course, will be kind of on here.